Hey, everybody. Welcome to our State of the Institute address. Uh, we're just going to wait for a couple of people to get through the waiting room and get their audio all connected. You should all be seeing my screen right now. We're going to follow a little bit of a presentation, just some talking points. Uh, we can distribute this presentation. For those of you that are certified exit planning advisors, we will put this inside of your member center uh, as well. So we'll throw that in the member center. But if you like it, uh, me email either your member experience representative. Uh, I can see them on my screen. You got John, Joe, and Josh. So if you're new to the EPI community or perhaps you're coming to a SEPA program this year, everybody that is a certified exit planning advisor is uh, assigned uh, a member experience representative to help you navigate, uh, help you navigate your uh, experience here at EPI. So with that, I think that uh, everybody seems to be loaded up. John will watch the waiting room and make sure that we get everybody loaded up. I wanna thank everybody for coming out to our State of the Institute address. We'll spend uh, maybe about 30 to 40 minutes together uh, talking about uh, maybe a handful of things. Today, I'd like to address with everybody the market. Uh, what does the market look like today? What did it look like last year? And and some insights from me and Chris and our advisors on where we believe the market is going. I want to talk about the generations in the marketplace as well. Baby boomers versus Gen Xers versus millennials. I also uh, want to talk about the role of EPI, the role of SEPAs, and why this all matters to the exit planning profession, the certified exit planning advisor, and everybody here a part of the, the EPI community. I can tell you folks, uh, if you've been active inside of EPI over the past couple of years, if you're a long time more veteran SEPA, it is a big year, 2022 for EPI. We are celebrating our 10 year anniversary of me and my dad, Chris Snyder, who uh, I'm sure all of you know, invented the value acceleration methodology, spending 10 years since we've purchased the Exit Planning Institute. And I think, you know, I really commend Chris and, and my dad because He's really evolved the marketplace, what we're seeing today. And I'll share some of these stats with you from some of our research and from some of our partners' research that advise Chris and I. The value acceleration methodology, I think, has undoubtedly changed the marketplace. I think it has undoubtedly changed the way we work with owners as advisors and the way owners think about their own business. I could tell you that, obviously, I'm probably a little biased because I've grown up through the value acceleration methodology. But nonetheless, it's changed my life as well. And so if you followed EPI, other than our 10 year anniversary, if you followed EPI over the past couple of years, it's been a couple of big years, even through our pandemic. EPI now has 3000 certified exit planning advisors. Not only are we seeing people become SEPAs, other your more traditional and core team advisors, your attorney, your financial advisor, CPA, a consultant, but we're starting to see functional specialties come into the space. People that might primarily participate inside of the prepare gate, People that work on the foreign tangible capitals, like a marketing consultant, an IT consultant, a leadership coach, a human resources person, and people that work on the personal side, like a life coach. These people are starting to come in. To give you an example, when I was talking to a, one of our marketing consultants, she said, Scott, you know, if we change the website, if we capture more leads this way, if we put inside of the, if we put in the, if we put in these systems, if we do these types of things, write this type of content organize our marketing team. We could drive these many leads into the business. And if your sales folks can close at the rates that they close at, it'll generate this much more revenue for you and thus this much more net profit within the year. Now that all sounds great, right? As a business owner to me, that all sounds fantastic. But my question to her was, not only do you know what that, that did for me in the year, but do you understand what that did for the value of my company? So I start, what I, why I mentioned that story to all of you as we start our State of the Institute address is that for me, the conversation has become more about value than ever before. It's not just about net income. It's not just about revenue. It's really about creating value. So EPI now has 3,000 SEPAs in the marketplace. We'll add another 1,300 to that number this year. We'll walk into next year with almost 4,500 certified exit planning advisors in the marketplace. Last year, EPI launched our EPI Academy. The Academy is for SEPAs to advance themselves or for non-SEPAs to advance themselves in the exit planning profession, the body of the value acceleration methodology, body of knowledge, and all of that good stuff that makes our, that makes our knowledge run deeper and our, our practices expand and accelerate. So inside of EPI Academy now, it's on-demand virtual training in really three forms. You have a really 
introductory basic level course that might be about two hours long. You have a course that's more foundation building that might be up to three or four hours long. And you have courses that are mastery level that might be up to eight hours long, very interactive. Some of you might've participated in some of these courses already as you've come through your SEPA experience over the last few months. But I encourage everybody to interact with that. If you're looking for how to implement exit planning, if you're looking at how to better engage owners, if you're looking for more technical topics, it's all there on demand for you to advance yourself. We have now virtual options for both, for really, for both our, our, for our SEPA program and we have in-person options. I'm happy to say that we brought back in-person certification programs uh, back in October in San Diego. Here in just a couple of weeks, the team flies to Scottsdale, Arizona to launch our uh, Scottsdale certification program. And in May, we'll be back in Chicago, which is where EPI and the, and the credential was founded. We also seen, have seen EPI more inside of our public relations, more inside of the, the media, if you will. Last year, I was able to join the Forbes Business Council and be the only person writing about value acceleration and exit planning, and frankly, folks, the use of the Certified Exit Planning Advisor. We have fresh content, probably more content and more fresh content than we've ever had before. We have more member benefits for all of you that are SEPAs. Not only do we have the excellent content, but we have our SEPA think tanks. If you haven't joined one, I would suggest that you do. They run every other week, so 25 times a year, the community gathers together. It's hosted by our member experience team. We spend about 20 minutes talking about a hot topic. Then we take that hot topic and break it down into, into our break, break, uh, breakout rooms. And we talk to each other about the topic while networking and getting to know our fellow SEPAs. And it is exclusive to SEPAs. And we also have the monthly member roundup. The roundup is a basically a curation of all the best industry content, EPI and non-EPI. It could be a podcast we want you to listen to, a book that we're reading, uh, a white paper, a case study, all content, again, curated by our member experience team and given to our SEPAs. So more member benefits than ever before. I'm happy to say that last year we brought back the state of owner readiness research, which I will talk about certainly today. We did a regional report uh, with Mark Kravitz and the chapter in New York City. It really... Uh, shed some really interesting results. And again, I'll, I'll share those with you here momentarily. And there is without doubt more to come. If you're a longtime SEPA, you know that we are innovators. Not only are we idea people, but we're game changers, we're executors. We, we are results driven. So there's certainly more to come. There's more research to come. There's the exit planning summit coming back in May in Scottsdale, or Arizona with 500 plus certified exit planning advisors and other supporting advisors and partners coming together. We will build out what we're calling our digital ecosystem. So this will advance the EPI website, advance the digital footprint of the certified exit planning advisor amongst other things. We will continue to build out our EPI Academy so that all of you can advance yourselves uh, within the value acceleration methodology. Chris and I will come out with the Walking to Destiny book 2.0 uh, and we will build more significant partnerships. Some of those partnerships could already be seen. If you navigate to the, the summit website and you look at the partners tab, these partners drive lucrative or revenue producing opportunities for our SEPAs. They connect us to business owners. They help accelerate our practice and they help us optimize our time. I think one of the best lessons a business owner can, can, can learn about scaling their company and providing better service to their customers that you can't do it all. That some of the best companies are built through really significant partnerships. So with that, folks, I'd like to dive into some of the market content and kind of advance through some of our slides and talk to you a little bit about uh, my opinion and, and our opinion at EPI about where we're going. I'd also like to thank uh, some of our partners that helped Chris and I put together some of this data and that advise us with their, uh, with their reports. And I would encourage everybody to use. Obviously, we have the U.S. Census, which provides us data, but we have three partners as well, PitchBook, DealWare, and the VOP, the Value Opportunity Profile, all of their uh, folks, we've used reports from uh, Bill at DealWare and, and Ken Sanginario, who many of you know at VOP have provided us some significant insights on where our market is going and where it was. So let's talk about the market. I know that many of us, uh, you know, we're probably gonna hear some of the similar type things that we, we typically hear looking at M&A reports, but from our perspective, I like to concentrate on the three generations because I think in exit planning, all the generations view it a little bit differently. Uh, and we're going to be, as you'll see here, working, I think really for the, 
maybe not the first time, but maybe more significantly than ever before with the next generations to come. So in 2022, baby boomers have an age range of 58 to 76. So the youngest being 58, the oldest being 76. The average age of a baby boomer in 2022 is 67 years old. And this is why I think it matters. For all of you that understand EPI's history, it was founded, our EPI was founded by two gentlemen from Chicago, Rich Jackham and Peter Christman. They wrote the book, The $10 Trillion Opportunity, which investigated these four and a half million businesses owned by baby boomers that would be transitioning, they said, this is back in 2005, that in the next 10 years, so by 2015, we'll see this, this exit wave of all of, the, of these businesses that create this $10 trillion opportunity. And for a long time, people were asking us at EPI, well, where are the owners? Where are these transitions? We just, we're just not seeing them. Maybe, they're, maybe this $10 trillion opportunity is wrong. I turn towards the facts. Look at the baby boomers' ages. We also need to understand the baby boomers as a generation. For all of you that are baby boomers on the call or on our uh, on our webinar today, I thank you, right? Because you guys are the inventors of the 60-hour work week. You guys are a passionate group of individuals. Your core value is success. So whether it's your business, whether it's your relationship with your husband or wife, whether it's your hobby, you want to feel successful within it. Plus your ages, if you look back when they wrote the $10 trillion opportunity, the baby boomers were only, the youngest being only 41 and the oldest being 50, uh, 59 years old. Undoubtedly, you guys aren't anywhere near ready for exit given your generational characteristics. The also, if you looked at the state of owner readiness survey report from 2013, this is significant. This was the first ever state of owner readiness uh, survey report that we did. Became It was a, a greater Cleveland, Northeast Ohio project that then was blown out nationally given its interest. Baby boomers back then taking that survey were ages 49 to 67. In an EY family business study, says that the, the says that in the lower middle market, business owners start thinking about exit and transition around the age of 62 years old. So certainly back in 2005, although there is in fact a baby boomer exit wave coming that I think that we're actually already in, back then they were simply too young. If you look at the state of owner readiness survey, they started to approach that age. But if you look at baby boomers in 2022, the exit wave is undoubtedly, is, is undoubtedly here. In 2021, what the market saw was great activity. In fact, record it was a record year for deals up 50% from the previous record that they had hold, some of, that they had held. Some of the exit motivators from 2021. So going back to slide one, looking at the baby boomer business owner's age, 58 to 76, average age to start thinking about exiting is 62. Average age of a baby boomer this year is 67. You add in some of these exit motivators, which is age. I might want to do some other things in life. We have a hot market right now. Valuations and multiples are high. Undoubtedly, our pandemic has changed the way we think. The overall economic outlook, whether it's taxes or otherwise, and generally the owner's health, per more personal factors. These five exit motivators, I think, with the age range of the overall baby boomer business owner, undoubtedly saw great activity in 2021. If you looked at the $10 trillion opportunity, Pete and Rich investigated and said that there was four and a half million businesses transitioning or, or four and a half million businesses owned by baby boomers. That was based off the 2004 U.S. Census data. Now in 2022, there are 3.1 million businesses owned by baby, um, owned by baby boomers. And 51% of the companies in our country today, in the U.S. today, are owned by baby boomers. Now, I think a number that we all as certified exit planning advisors and any advisor really to a business owner and their teams and their families, 43% of American businesses are owned by people ages 34 to 54, and 6% are owned by people under or under the age of 30, 34 years old. These, I think, are significant numbers. If you look at it at, as a whole, 51% are owned by baby boomers and 49% are owned by people under the age of 54. As we get to some of our generational statistics, I think this matters at the uh, uh, I think this matters in the way that we work with owners 
and the way that we talk about the value acceleration methodology. If we're looking at companies that sold in 2021, it's interesting, I pulled this uh, data from their preliminary findings, which frankly, guys, aren't I don't believe are even out yet. They gave me early access to them based on our state of owner readiness or based on our state of the Institute address today. They looked at companies with zero to $2 million of EBITDA and the average multiple there was 5.8. If you looked at companies two to four million dollars in EBITDA, their average multiple was 6.1, though there is undoubtedly a range of multiples that you see on this dealware slide that they created from 2021 closed deals. Multiples could be all the way up to nearly 20 times EBITDA across this board. What I think is actually quite interesting about these companies that sold is, is their buyers. So who are buying these things? undoubtedly, and there's more charts and graphs that we could show if you're interested in that dealware report, please email us and we can connect you to the folks there or navigate to their website and sign up for it. Uh, it is a free report uh, and very, very insightful, particularly to the lower middle market and the small business market, what I would consider micro market companies. Uh, very interesting. But nonetheless, in 2021, if you studied the closed deals, what you would find is that the two top buyers, number one, were corporate strategic buyers, and number two, weren't platform private equity, but add-on private equity. Hottest industry, according to the reports, top four by far, were, were business or business to business, were business to business or bi uh, were business services, manufacturing, healthcare and medical, and construction and construction materials. Most attractive companies to buyers, they said that they look to pass on their cost appropriately to the customer. They had strong employee retention and they had the use of technology to increase productivity and optimize people's time. For all of us that are certified exit planning advisor, I want us to pause. Guys, th this is attractiveness and readiness. Frankly, it's more readiness than anything else. It's the four intangible capitals that provide 80% or more of a company's value. They want to be have great customer relationships so that their pricing could go up so that costs that they might have had over the pandemic are passed on and recovered by the customer buying their products. That's customer capital. They want strong employee retention. That's human capital. And they want the use of technology to increase productivity and optimize their time. That's structural capital. All of these things drive your multiple up, thus driving your valuation up as well. A little insightful as well, they're looking at the deals that in fact did not sell, but but were killed at, at, letter of, at, at, at letter of intent and in the due diligence phase. Number one was price. Number two was terms. And number three was eroding financials over the course of their, over the course of their deal. Now let's look at the state of owner readiness survey report. I thought this was really insightful. So for all of us that are SEPAs, we know that, you know, over the course of, almost 10 years now, nine years, EPI has conducted deep research around the attractiveness and readiness of businesses and the preparedness of owners to transition those companies. I mentioned that we started the first one in 2013. We completed our last one just this past October of 2021. Since 2013 and between those years, we've done regional reports so that we can compare the different states and the different regions uh, to each other. What we found in New York City specifically, I would like to call out maybe four or five bullet points, and I want to talk to you about why it matters to you as a certified exit planning advisor. Interestingly enough, different than any other report that I have seen, 81% of owners actually said yes. They were educated to some extent within some type of exit planning process. They felt that they were educated. That number is wildly different than other owners before. That number has been all the way up to 90% of owners indicating that they have, have done no formal education around exit planning. I thought another interesting statistic from the New York City State of Owner Readiness Report is that 40% have actively were actively planning personally for life after business. So this three legs of the stool is relevant to them. It's in front of them. Almost 50% of people are saying, yes, I have some plans and I know that there's life after business and it matters to me. When the owners were asked in this particular survey, what was next? They indicated three top things. One, after they sold their business, they wanted to invest in another company. They wanted to sit 
on a board. Two, they wanted to do charity or community work. And three, they wanted to do consulting so they could help business owners also effectively exit. Wildly enough, folks, 50, 55% of this New York City audience actually indicated that their FA, their financial advisor, was their most trusted advisor. Now, this is wildly opposite than years past. If you're the CPA on the call today, you're probably a little disappointed that at least in New York City, the financial advisor has now passed you. And but, so the last bullet point to me is the most critical and I want to talk about it. 50% of the owners that uh, the the owners that took this survey were ages 40 to 49. So not boomers, they were Gen Xers. Now, if we look and study the Gen Xers, to me that this makes a ton of sense. I'd also like to commend our certified exit planning advisors in the New York City market because you're active. It's a large market for EPI. You're active with your owners and clearly over the past 10 years have been driving the message home and executing the value acceleration methodology. Uh, if we're seeing these types of numbers, if we're seeing the financial advisor growing to one of the most trusted advisor, we're seeing that balance of the three legs of the stool. We're seeing the conversations being had. We're seeing way more owners being educated. But let's focus in on this age group of 40 to 49. Because I also think it's significant shift that we've seen in the market to 43 to maybe up to 49%, nearly half the market is actually under the, or is be under the age of 54. So I think overall guys, if you've heard me speak before, I'm a, certainly without doubt, uh, very into studying generations. I think the generation matters. I think that there's a massive opportunity to help baby boomer business owners. And I think there's an even bigger opportunity folks to work with the Gen Xers and the millennials to grow more significant companies and do what we've been teaching for years. Implement the value acceleration methodology, align the three legs of the stool, take your company from very successful to very significant and have a very high value exit that's very fulfilling in your next act of your life. Again, 49% of the companies are owned by these folks 54 years and older. So I think that the community of SEPAs really has two challenges. Undoubtedly our market is very hot right now. Pandemic, economy, age, personal factors, boomers are starting to get out. We're undoubtedly seeing what Rich and, and Rich and Pete talked about back in 2004 and 2005, but we're also seeing these new owners coming in and growing. And I think that for me, folks, one of the biggest impacts we can have is frankly on guys that are my age, that are approaching 40 years old, showing us how to grow these more significant companies. In order to do that as certified exit planning advisors, I believe that you have to know your audience. We have to know who we're talking to. We have to know what's important to them. So there's two ways that I would discuss this. Person that taught me this was one of our own, Sean Hutchinson from RFN Global. If you don't know Sean, you should. He was one of our original SEPAs. He sat next to my dad, Chris Snyder, in the class of 2008. Uh, him with many other SEPAs actually own a, a national value growth consulting firm that helps owners do everything that we're just talking about. Sean talks about knowing owners uh, and meeting them where they are in three ways. He said some owners are triggerers. They're coming to you because they're triggered by some event. It could be a negative. It could be a positive. The thing that we have to know in this particular group, that they have a shorter time frame. I got an amazing offer from private equity. I got to get ready, guys. I got to get my ducks in a row because we need to get into the due diligence process because you know what? The pandemic, the economy, the uncertainty. I like, look, I just think it's time for me. I've owned this company for 30 years. It's time for me to go. That's a trigger. Unfortunately, some of these triggers are also falling to the five Ds. There was a divorce, a death, a partner dispute, a disagreement that parts ways. Point being, folks, is that you're going to talk to those folks about the three legs of the stool and the value acceleration methodology in a different way. Next are the people that are explorers. They could be people coming to you saying, I have a longer runway, but I wanna learn about exit planning. I want to become more educated. The market's hot. You know, The people on the golf course are getting, are, are getting high valuations. I've got more solicitations on my business than ever before. 
I'm not necessarily ready to exit, but I am interested in learning more. And probably the last group, the pivoters, are the people that we want to work with the most. These are the people that are pivoting their mindset from maybe lifestyle business to value creator business or pivoting their mindset from, okay, I've had a great business so far, very successful, good revenues, good growth, good net profit, happy people, happy customers. But I want to pivot that mindset from year to year or maybe three-year strategy to three to five-year exit planning that include all of that as well. These are the pivoters. They are value acceleration mindset folks. If you're looking at these younger folks, it looks like they're becoming more educated and are, in fact, more interested in value acceleration than ever before. Maybe if we could educate them now, they'll be easier to work with for years to come. So you have explorers, triggerers, and pivoters. The next thing that you need to know about your business owner is what generation they fit into. If you're a baby boomer business owner, you have deep, you're a passionate person. You have deep passion for what you do. Your core value is success. Uh, and you guys, again, are the inventors of the 60-hour work week. What this means to me is that you've likely spent the last 15 or 30 years building your business from your garage to your big manufacturing facility, from you and your partner to 200 employees and an international product that you're building. You have dumped a lot of passion into your company for, for many years and likely haven't focused a lot on the next act or next phase of your life. You're out of balance. You're looking at one of the three legs of the stool. Luckily, you have a unbelievable opportunity to innovate, you have a very deep passion in being successful. So the exit of your company, one of the biggest events of your life is going to matter. And you have an unbelievable ability to handle crisis, just like our pandemic over the last couple of years. Now, if you're talking to somebody that owns 43% of the U.S. Uh, businesses today, these people that are 34 to 54 years old, you would be a Gen Xer. The Gen Xer is prime time for value acceleration methodology, and here's why. If you're a Gen Xer, you likely believe in saving money. You value your time, not necessarily success. Your core value is time. You believe in working smarter. You believe in working smarter, uh, not harder. Oh, hi, uh, Angie. How are you? What's this going on there? So, uh, excuse that. Sorry, guys. But if you're a Gen Xer, you believe in working smarter, not harder. You believe in optimizing your time. You believe in a work-life balance. Folks, for those of you that are certified exit planning advisor, undoubtedly this screams five stages of value maturity, four intangible capitals, three legs of the stool, two concurrent paths, and one goal to drive value across all three legs. Last but not least, you have your millennials. I'm sure everybody, maybe, I don't know, I haven't heard a lot of crap about millennials in a while. I'm a millennial. I'm uh, on the upper end of those millennials, like a cusper, but I am definitely a millennial. Millennials, I think, are great for value acceleration methodology for two reasons. Number one, we're a very ambitious generation, but we're not very focused. Value acceleration methodology takes these big ideas, breaks them down into three-year strategies, one-year one -year strategies, and 90-day sprints. Last uh, but not least, another thing that sticks out for me is millennials are spenders. I am likely a financial advisor's worst nightmare. My financial advisor said, Scott, you're supposed to put some money in this investment account. It's not there yet. What happened to it? I said, well, I decided to buy nine acres of land. He said, Scott, that's not a part of the financial strategy. Undoubtedly, millennials are spenders. We're the folks that put the backpacks on after we graduated from high school, toured Europe, built up a bunch more college or not college debt, but credit card debt because we wanted life experiences. Nonetheless, if you're a millennial, which is about 6% of the market today, business owner market today in our country, we believe, I think we, we believe in having these life experiences and we need to get kind of framed and harnessed into the value acceleration methodology. Again, knowing the generations and knowing where you're at Pivot or trigger or explorer, as Sean talks about, I think is going to be critical to our success in working with this massive market of owners that is now what we're seeing transition and all the future owners that are coming in to our marketplace over the years. At the beginning of this year, I was named president of the Exit Planning Institute and I came out with a vision for our company and our community. 
we changed the way we started talking about exit planning. We saw, talked about changing the outcome. And I think that's meaningful for many business owners. But I think really, if you peel that layer of the onion back and you ask why, what does that really mean? To me, that means that certify exit, certified exit planning advisors and all of us in the EPI community exist today to take companies from very successful to very significant. And what's that mean? I think most owners have successful companies. They have seemingly happy people. They got great customers that are engaged with what they, in, what they do. They make good money. Their P&L looks good. Their balance sheet looks good. They have nice stuff. They live in nice homes. They have second homes. Seemingly everything is great. And I think it is. I think that they make good money. They provide to our communities and they pro to provide a ton of jobs. But when they go to sell their company, they're slapped across the face by saying your company is not worth what you thought it was. And in fact, your company is not actually worth anything at all. I saw another statistics from our dealware reports that said 48% of companies that were owned by, I think it was baby boomers, were just shutting down because they were worth nothing. They were just having a fire sale and, and shutting down. And I'm saying, what a shame. For years and years and years, we've made good money. We have happy people. We have great customers. We've got a great product and service. So we're very successful, but we're not very significant. And what does a significant company mean? It means that there's balance. It means that these three elements, these three legs of the stool, business, personal, and financial, are integrated and talked about on a regular basis. It means that we're building not only successful companies, but attractive and ready companies that are valuable and transferable internally or externally at any time when an exit might happen. On my terms, not on my terms. On my time, not on my time. And that we're building companies that are owner independent and strong. Now, what is the role of the certified exit planning advisor? And what is the role of EPI? How do we support folks like all of you? Now, I mean, my, my team that's on our webinar today is probably going to laugh a little bit because I'm playing on EPI, right? I thought this was like the, the coolest idea that we've had in a while where we said, look, Exit Planning Institute, everybody knows EPI is Exit Planning Institute. I want you to know EPI as experiences, people, and innovation. I believe if the Exit Planning Institute community, the SEPA community, and all of us at EPI could drive significant and transformational experiences for each other and for our business owners, if we could build great and effective teams that help owners build significant companies and transition, and if we can continue to lead the market in creativity and innovative thinking, we will continue to be on top as certified exit planning advisors, and we will continue to lead the market and drive companies from successful to significant. And I think it takes those three things, experiences, people, and innovation. So let's peel that layer of the onion back and say, Scott, as a SEPA, what are you doing for me? EPI over the next three to five years is focused on these five critical things. Number one, we are gonna equip the professional advisor with the appropriate training, tools, resources, and relationships to advance and accelerate them and their firms. We are going to continue to conduct deep research. We are going to market the importance of the value acceleration methodology, exit planning, and the use of the certified exit planning advisors. We will continue to be innovative and evolve. And last but not least, folks, we are gonna dominate the competition so that people, when people think exit planning, they think about the certified exit planning advisor. Now let's peel that back and hold me to these goals over the next three to five years. Number one, when I talk about equipping the professional advisor, we've had, have advanced our certified exit planning advisor program. 1,300 new people will become SEPAs in 2022. 3,000 active SEPAs in the marketplace today. We will continue to evolve that program we provide that program the third week of every month of the year now. There's a SEPA program going on. Whether you're a SEPA or non-SEPA in this call, I would think about coming back to the program to evolve your thinking as the methodology and the instructors involved. If you're a non-SEPA, I would consider at minimum the education that is a part of the Certified Exit Planning Advisor. I would go deeper to say we should consider certifying ourselves within that methodology and joining that community. We will continue to evolve EPI Academy putting more and more courses in there that advance you and your teams. And we will work through partners to develop education that is perhaps outside 
the value acceleration methodology deeper into one of the specialties or about advising or about accelerating your advisory practice and position use with owners. Research has always been a big part of what, who we are at EPI and it'll continue to be a foundation setter. We, Chris and I are going to advance the state of owner readiness survey, calling it you know, state of owner readiness survey simply 2.0. We wanna focus on some things about how did the pandemic affect us? What are these new owners like? This 43% of Gen Xers now owning companies. What can we do to help the 51% of business owners that are baby boomers and looking to transition? If you saw on LinkedIn and maybe through your, through your uh, newsletter, we have an unbelievable opportunity through all of our partners at the Rocky Mountain chapter uh, of the uh, of, of the of the Rocky Mountain chapter of the Exit Planning Institute. We are partnering with the state of Colorado through their governor's office to conduct the State of Owner Readiness Survey Colorado because the governor and his team and his organizations and his committees believe that we need to help these owners transition. We need to create significant companies. It's good for our communities. It's good for our people. It's good for our taxes. It's good for our charities. We need to help. So that is kicking off on February 11th. And I will be in Colorado launching the results of that part, uh, report in May. We're gonna continue to document case studies. EPI comes out with a new case uh, each quarter, a part of our quarterly content package packages. Throughout our chapter network, we have a case study that everybody is driving best practices on and, and communicating on. At the Exit Planning Summit, we'll have yet another case study uh, where we're investigating and looking at companies, whether it's a fictional company that we're, we're trying to dissect and apply and get to know each other advisors or real case studies from real owners. In fact, what we're gonna do is in the fourth quarter here at EPR, our webinars that we typically have, we typically have two per month, are all focused around me having business owner interviews with owners that have either exited successfully or not so successfully, and owners that are looking to transition. And last but not least, folks, I promise you that our company, the Exit Planning Institute, will be living proof of what the value acceleration methodology is and what the correct use of certified exit planning advisors are. If you look at your past, uh, if you go into your member center, if you're a Credential Plus member, if you go into the member center, you go into the, uh, if you go in and you go into your folders there, we had a, uh, a new case study and a new white paper that was written at the end of last year. And we used EPI uh, as, that, as that case study. And I think that the best thing that we can do when a company says, or one of your adv fellow advisors or one of your fellow owners that you have says, well, can you show me what value acceleration has done to a company? You look at Chris and Scott Snyder and everybody here on the team at EPI and say, here it is. You have a family dynamic, a father-son team, late 30s, early 60s. You have 18 employees across EPI who understand and, and believe in value acceleration. You have a company that in 2012 had 120 SEPAs and now has 3,000 SEPAs. We have easy communication, all of these things that make a company significant. Marketing the use of SEPAs. So I'm very happy to announce that we've expanded our, our overall marketing strategy. We've hired a PR consultant. Uh, again, we've had a lot of success in Forbes over the course of 2021. We wanna expand that reach. Uh, we wanna expand that footprint by talking more and sharing more of our content. Through that, not only are we, not only are we building the EPI community, but we're getting directly to owners. And the message to owners is not only is this important to do now, exit strategy is business strategy, but the advisor that you use to do it is called a certified exit planning advisor and you should engage one. We are partnering with more SEPAs on owner educational events, going direct again to owners through our certified exit planning advisors to educate the end user of all of the stuff that we've been talking about over the past 40 or so minutes. We're also taking out more and more digital ads on things like Google or LinkedIn or Bing where we're promoting the use of the Certified Exit Planning Advisor and being a part of the EPI community. Evolve and innovate. We're working on Walking to Destiny 2.0 that will address these multiple generations in the market and advance the methodology. At the end of the year, you guys will see the basics of value acceleration come out. This is going to be an owner-centric course with the intent that if we can educate great owners, we could marry them with great advisors and we all understand each other and we could drive towards significant companies. We're going to advance and evolve the value acceleration methodology. The value acceleration methodology came out in 2013. So it's nearly 
10 years old. We have evolved our chapter network. Our chapter not only is doing in-person, but they're doing virtual. Whether you're sitting in Cleveland, Ohio, like I am, or LA, we can attend each other's meeting in a, from a virtual component. We have advanced our structure and our curriculum. Now it involves peer sharing and case study evaluation, topical type meetings, and business owner forums. Last but not least, if you haven't seen folks, the Exit Planning Summit is back. It is the largest exit planning centric conference in the United States of America. It'll be back and about three times larger than it was in 2019. Obviously, our conference has been off over the last two years because of our pandemic, but we are kicking those doors down and walking into Scottsdale, Arizona to bring back all of these people that power the value acceleration methodology. We're advancing ourselves, we're evolving, we're innovating, we're driving best practices, we're deepening our relationship, we're providing opportunities. Folks, plainly, if you're not signed up, you're missing out and you're going to be left behind. You should sign up for this conference, advance yourself as a SEPA, meet other people that could surround you on these teams, talk about EPI experiences, people and innovation. This is an example of it. Last, but certainly not least, and I'll take some questions uh, from everybody. If you have questions, throw them into the chat. I'm happy to facilitate that as we wind down here today. I want to continue to dominate the market and I wanna to continue to dominate the competition. So that when the business owner is Googling exit planning, the Exit Planning Institute comes up first. They navigate into the find the SEPA directory. They find the right advisor inside of their state or inside of their region. I want to continue to put SEPAs up front. We're going to do that by continuing to create strong content that is thought provoking, motivating, and inspiring. We're gonna to continue to have strong marketing and strong branding. Again, not to just put EPI up front, but put to the use of SEPAs up front. I am honestly really happy to say folks, when you do Google exit planning, and if you're sitting there, if I'm sitting there saying, Scott, I'm a SEPA, what are you doing for me? Uh, I could tell you that our competition owns the URL exitplanning.com. We inherited the URL exit-planning-institute.org. So not necessarily the easiest thing to type in, but when you Google exit planning, exit-planning-institute.org is the first thing that comes up, maybe minus some ads that you're getting blown out at, on Google. If you actually go down in there with the first thing that comes up. So that means SEPAs are moving a market. Last but not least, a part of our summit, we have the Excellence in Exit Planning Awards. These is a, this is a showcase of advisors simply doing things right. They understand the generations. They understand their role on the exit planning team. They understand the concepts and principles and the process of value acceleration, and they are helping take owners from successful to significant. Folks, uh, I am very proud to be the president and one of the owners at the Exit Planning Institute uh, as, a, as an exited owner myself, uh, as an owner that's actively in the market. I have this kind of unique position where I'm a, a business owner, so I could likely be one of your clients. I'm, a, I'm an advisor and I'm an educator. I think that one of the things that we're seeing and that we're about to see as this age wave and this, uh, this exit wave comes is that the exit planning profession is a little segmented. When you go to look for a CPA, there's only one certified public account. They've been around since something like 1865. There's 600,000 of them in the marketplace today in this country. If you're looking for financial advisors, you'll see CFPs come up. There's only really, there's only one certified financial planner. What I see as perhaps our next hurdle is that when these 51% of baby boomer owners are starting to transition, or this 43% are looking to grow more significant companies and maybe exit early and have multiple exit across their career, they're Googling exit planning. Although Exit Planning Institute comes up first, there are SEPAs, there are certified exit planning advisors, there are certified business exit consultants. If I'm an owner, I'm saying, who the hell do I use? I think that if we can continue to do these things, experiences, people, and innovation, we will unify the market so that the SEPA, be, be, that the SEPA stays on top. I thank you for everybody that is a SEPA on this call for rolling up your sleeves, not only being very innovative, but being people that execute. I was on a podcast yesterday with one of our new SEPAs, and we talked about this concept of relentless execution. We are people that get shit done, folks. And I think that business owners really appreciate that kind of attitude. So uh, with that, uh, everybody, 
Uh, that is our State of the Institute uh, address. Uh, I encourage everybody to get active with your member experience team, uh, get into the think tanks. Uh, I encourage everybody to, again, continue to roll up the sleeves and make it happen for business owners. This is an exciting time to be in, uh, to be in exit planning. It's an exciting time to be a SEPA. We are going to have a robust transition rate wave over the next several years. And I think the big impact that we make is not only helping those baby boomer business owners exit today and tomorrow, but also helping younger folks like me learn a whole new way to run companies. And that will be the mark of a certified exit planning advisor. With that, folks, I appreciate uh, your time. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen uh, so I can see everybody. If you guys have questions, uh, please throw them into the question box. I'm going to look at uh, look at this now to see if there's anything uh, that we need to answer. <clears throat> oh yeah, see everybody, be a family business. I th unless this is somebody playing my mom right now, Denise Snyder is, is my mother. Uh, she does D&D &D lunch parties here at EPI. So talk about how we run value acceleration, part of our culture, social capital, part of our human capital is my mom, Denise, and her brother, Dave, my uncle, come in and do lunch parties. Given our pandemic, we haven't done a lot of that inside of the office, but you can see our member experience person, Joe Clower, over there commenting, we all miss you. So thank you, mom, for that. I appreciate that. You guys will all meet her at the summit. Will you be providing copies of your slides and data? Absolutely, yes. So we'll either dump it into the member center. Uh, we can send it to you directly. Uh, John, can you throw my email into the members or into the chat so people could just email me directly? I'd love to interact with folks, connect you to the right people. We'll make sure that you get a copy of this. I would encourage you to read the pitch book report. I would encourage you to go to Dealware and look at their uh, their report as well. Uh, a lot of cool and and, and, and and good data there. Chris Snyder provided a lot of information for me as well. I know that he worked a lot on, on all of this. I actually have like a bunch of his notes sitting right here and all his highlights. So if you wanna to get uh, together with Chris, he's happy to do that as well. Uh, and Chris will be coming out uh, with more of a white paper, I think on some of his, uh, and some of his findings and opinions of the market uh, as well. All right. Hey, Scott, can I ask you a question? Oh, sure, yeah, hey man, how are you? Hey, doing well, looking forward to seeing you in May. And uh, great stuff here today. I got a question, if you need to take it offline, that's cool. Sure. Um, I've been noticing on LinkedIn that, uh, You've been kind of chatting with EOS. Just curious, is that relationship is, you know, what's that about and how do we sure. interface with them? Yeah, sure. So I think that, uh, I think there's three big ones, I would say, Paul, first. There's EOS. So you have the EOS implementer. You have, I think it's the Gazelle, the scaling up, burn harness folks. And then you have the, the, the scale architects through predictable success. So I think these three folks are consultative in nature. I think that they're supportive. A lot of EOS implementers, a lot of gazelles, and a lot of scale architectures are, in fact, SEPAs as well. Uh, the relationship there uh, that we that we have is that out of all three, Paul, EOS implementers are coming into the SEPA program primarily because they want to talk about value. I'm I'm a, I, I'm a fan of Gino. I'm a fan of Vern. I'm a fan of Les. These three gentlemen that created these three systems and mentalities but none of them talk about building value. And other than Gino recently, there's nobody that's talking about aligning the three legs of the stool. So I think that we see EOS implementers coming to the market. If you're a financial advisor, a CPA, an attorney, and you're looking for somebody more consultative in nature, I would turn to one of those type of folks. I'm not necessarily favoring EOS one way or the other. Uh, in all transparency, it's advanced our company. Paul, I've combined Chris's value acceleration methodology with EO, with the entrepreneurial operating system to advance us here at EPI. For me, as a business owner, it's been a really good educational tool for my, my staff here and my team here and my executive team. Last year, actually it was, Paul, it was December of 2020, Chris, my dad, said, Scott, we've done a nice job of creating an owner-independent business for me. But now that you're in here running the company, what if you die? What happens if you die? And I said, Dad, that's a damn good question. Because he's like, I'm surely not coming in and running this company, though I could. I don't know if it's the right role for me. And so we need to surround you with the right leaders and now start to advance the company to the next level by making it independent of you. So EOS for us allowed us to teach the traction and EOS model 
And it was easy enough to understand for our relatively young leadership team. It also gives us a good way to communicate. It provides struck, a, a little bit of additional structure to our meetings and it provides a great scorecard. So we use it at EPI, uh, but I also grew up, honestly, the first business book that I think my dad gave me when I was 15 was Vern Harnish's Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. Gino, to round this conversation out, Gino is our keynote speaker uh, at, the exit planning, uh, at the exit planning summit, and he's not speaking on traction. I hired Gino because he's speaking on the balance of life and optimizing your time as a business owner. I think it's twofold, folks. Many of us here on our call today are, in fact, business owners. We're the entrepreneurial advisor. We own our own advisory company, so we could probably learn a little bit about balance as well. If you're anything like me, I could tell you that I spend a hell of a lot of time in my office or in my home office growing and working with my team and all of you and growing our company. Uh, I think a balance of life is needed. I think that it matches the three legs of the stool, business, personal, financial, which is the organizing principle for everything that we do. So Gina wrote a book called The EOS Life. It talks about uh, optimizing your time. I think it's great for you as the advisor. You're going to take things home from it right away. But I think it's a message that we can carry to our business owners as well that aligns to the three legs of the stool. So that is, Paul, I think that's a great question. You see a lot of activity with EPI and EOS. Um, I think that Gino, again, has a great EOS life book and thought process and, and scoring system, which at SEPA's, we use Chris's common sense scoring system. So scoring is, is natural to us. Uh, and it has certainly helped us advance, but undoubtedly, EPI was built uh, in part on utilizing actually Bern Harnish's Mastering the Rock, Rockefeller Habits and One Page Strategic Framework. And so um, I think all of them are great. I just see a lot of EOS implementers becoming SEPAs so they can have the value conversation and be connected to the other advisors that they don't have access to today or, or on their teams. But great question. Uh, what about what was the number of response respondents in the New York City report? It's a good question. I don't know offhand. Uh, you could navigate into the member center. It's in there. It talks about that in the in the intro and in Chris's report. I want to say that we had a little bit north of two to three hundred responses. That's typically we get anywhere between two hundred and five hundred responses in a regional state of owner readiness survey report. All right. Looking through here, comments, questions. I think we're set. All right, just going through comments and questions to make sure that I have everything. All right, great. I think I, I have all the questions answered. Uh, member experience team, if we're set, then I'm good as well. Guys, we're approaching the one, uh, the two o'clock Eastern hour. So it took us the full hour. I really appreciate everybody's time. Uh, I do pride ourselves on being available. So please email your member experience team. They're here to help. Please email me directly. Uh, I try to engage with members each month and I look forward to hopefully seeing all of you at the summit or at one of our chapter events. I'll be in Scottsdale, Arizona the week of the 13th. So if you're in Arizona or around Arizona, love to hang out. Uh, we have a SEPA social on that Tuesday night. With that, everybody, thank you for coming to hang out. Really appreciate it. If you haven't seen my, haven't seen my passion, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you have. We are up for a great next two years. Next, see you guys. We'll see you soon.